What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today, <clears throat> we got three big things, three, three big videos coming. Today, we got the Marcus Alonso SBC. Tomorrow, we're going to do the Jonathan Tarr SBC. Do we get a mega pack for completing this second pit? Two players pack, because it's not that huge really, but getting that Jonathan Tarr is big. And then the day after, after rewards on Thursday, we're going to do the Henrik Mkhitaryan SBC. You're probably thinking, Nep, you've got 82,000 coins. You're not making these SBCs. We're making these SBCs. Um, before we get into those SBCs, what do I want to show you? I'll show you why I'm going to make those SBCs, all right? We finished, obviously, Elite 2 in Fuck Champs this week, which means we get nice big coin bonus. I was actually giving some grief about the Elite 2 finish, right? You can get 26 wins, and it only gives you 30,000 more coins than getting 23 wins. I don't think that's necessarily very fair. 26 wins is so good. It's one win off of Elite. I think Elite 2 should also offer an extra 100k pack. But we're going to get 100,000 coins coming in. Um, which is going to give us, obviously, the premium team of the week pack. The jumbo, the 100k pack. The three inform special item packs. And then 100,000 coins, which is going to go towards Henrik Mkhitaryan. Uh, we're going to get... Fu rivals rewards which is going to give us a lot of players to be able to complete it. we already got a lot of players to complete it and then we've got enough coins here now to complete um alonso and of course jonathan tar is done via gameplay so alonso right now is coming in at 160k however it's 90,000 coins for the chelsea sbc which we've done which gives a 100k pack and it's 75,000 coins for the spain sbc however the spain sbc version um it requires Champions League cards and I've got a whole bunch of untradables that we're going to use in this one to get it done basically a lot cheaper but we're going to do the items one at a time here guys and the first item we're going to be taking is going to be uh, the 100k pack and we're going to open the packs as we go so we've got a tradable Kepa first owner uh, Lauren Koscielny that I bought for 800 coins I know I can use him in the Arsenal one but don't worry I got Mkhitaryan and uh, Socrates for that Vincent Company picked up for 15k Pepe for 10k Nanny that I picked up for 16k. He's actually worth about 20k right now, but I bought him as a, an investment. And hey, what a great time to use him. Uh, untradable Ramsey, first owner. Tradable Vidal, first owner, of course. Brilliant, saved us some coins there. Carvalho, first owner as well. Pedro, first owner too. Joan Jordan as a tradable first owner that I did convert up to striker. Cost me about 1,500 coins, but saved me a lot of coins. And then Koke, the most expensive one in the team, 21,000. So we've done this all together for about... That's 60, 70,000, which is about the going rate of, of what it should be. But it gets us a 100k pack. Now, all I'm hoping for out of this 100k pack, obviously some icons, informs, UCL cards would be amazing. But if we only get just 84s, 85s, it's usable cards for SBCs, I'll be more than happy with that. So let's start with the Jumbo Rare Players Pack. Are we going to get a walkout? No, we are not. I now need to see some 85s and 84s in this to make it worth my while. Argentina, Cam, I'm not on the red list anymore, boys. I am off the red list. A 100k pack and we get Benega. I am not on the red list anymore. Lots of 83s in there, which is, well, three 83s. Savage, Trigueros, Spanish as well, which is nice. Olivier Giroud, currently selling for 1,000 coins. Castiles, Marcus Alonso himself. 5k for him. We'll actually get rid of him. Um... That's not bad. That's a nice 5k, that is. Milik. I don't know if... Ooh, Milik's up at 2k as well. So we'll sell we'll sell Milik too. Get some coins back for him. And then the rest of this is pretty, pretty bad in terms of what it's got on offer for us there. We get Malcolm as a duplicate there. Um, he's he's a couple of k by looks of things. Maybe a bit less. We'll see if he sells. Uh, Ica Casillas as a Spaniard might sell. No, doesn't really. But we'll drop him for like 950 as an 82. Hopefully he'll sell. We get Lucas in there as well, uh, looking like about 1,600 coins. So we'll drop him up for 1,500. Uh, Skirtle probably doesn't sell for much. No, he doesn't even sell. We'll discard. Doesn't sell, doesn't sell. Palos doesn't sell. This guy might sell, but probably too low rated. Yeah, far too low rated. Uh, so these guys we're going to discard because there's no point keeping them in the trade pile space and eating up their trade pile space. So we're going to get ourselves, you know... We're, we're already up to like almost 100,000 coins, uh, which obviously is enough to complete the Spain section. So I am going to go and complete the Spain section and I will be right back. All right, guys. So we have done the Spain section. Uh, we're throwing away some beasts here, man. But who cares, right? Because we've got... A, I, I'm, I'm forcing myself to not get attached to players this year so that we keep improving the squad. So Adan, first owner, going. Gelson Martins, 
Uh, the UCL upgrade, of course, we have his ones to watch, so that doesn't even make any difference. He's untradeable. We've never used him. We're getting rid. PK, we picked up for 35k. Jimenez for 4k. Party, 120 games for us. Now that we've got Guilavogui, Makaleli, Paul Pogba. Um, who else we got in for that CDM role? Somebody else in there as well. I can't even remember who. Uh, he was good for us for the 120 games. It's time for Partey to, to vacate the premises. 120 games, two goals, 32 assists. Absolute beast he was for the club, but it is uh, time to say goodbye. Carvalho, we picked up for 3,300. Trigueros, I think we just packed actually out of the 100k pack. Pablo, Pablo Sarabia, we played 11 games with this dude. He's got an all right card, but I, I know these reds will come in handy eventually, but we're, I'm, I'm going to be saving lots of them, but where I can use one or two and save myself having to buy like 8k Illaramendi or something like that, we're going to get rid of him, no dramas. Vasquez, we picked up for 1.2k. Fred, again, another one that played a lot of games for us, but we will never use him anymore. You know, he's just got no chance. And then Ander Herrera, an untradeable first owner. These guys have got to go. And that gives us Marcus Alonso and a mega pack. And I've still got 50,000 coins in the bank. Now, my account is getting light, guys. It is getting light. And once we complete Henrik Mkhitaryan, in fact, with what I've got in the club with a 50k and with 100k to come from uh, uh, Weekend League... Um, we you know, we'll be able to do him even if we exclude rivals rewards. And I have so much stuff in the club. But we've got Marcus Alonso. He is gonna be our left back throughout the next few games. I'm gonna test him out in the game in the team and see how I like him compared to Mendy. Obviously, he's got great stats other than pace. And the way this game plays, pace isn't really that important. Three star, three star, high, high, six two is really nice. He's got 91 stand, which is massive. He's got great reactions and ball control, which is important. He's got good passing, good curve, good shooting, which doesn't matter. His sprint speed is quite good as well. So with a shadow chem star, when we boost that defending, when we boost that pace, he's going to be good for us. He's going to go into the club. And let's see what we get out of the mega pack. Last time we had a, a popular positive mega pack. It had, um, who was in it? What did we sell? Casillas, Milik, and Alonso sold their happy days. We ended up packing out of the mega pack previous mega pack Paul Pogba if we can get anything quite like that again that would be amazing let us go let us see it's not a walk out I'm not on the red list anymore dudes I've been I've been checked off the red list EA EA oh wait inform hold up hold up Mexican centre mid hey man that's a nice little 10k back you know it's, it's nothing major but 10k is 10k at the end of the day and, and it all counts we probably made a nice like 20 30k back off of these uh, these rewards all up so I, I'm not going to complain about that at all um We'll pop this guy down. I'll sell all of this stuff on at later. Ooh, four squad fitnesses. That's going to be like another six or seven K out of that as well, which is fantastic. I mean, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. We, out, out of all of our packs, we're going to make a nice amount of uh, coins back. Nothing crazy. Out of the 100K pack with all the players we got, with the consumables and stuff we got here, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there and say we're going to make anywhere from like fifty to 70,000 coins back from this SBC. So, you know, we didn't get too lucky here. Uh, but what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to go and have a look at the team and the in-game stats and, and such. Uh, we are going to be playing, of course, as I said, Alonso at left back. But I'm going to go and put my main team in so we can have a look at everything that's going on. I will be right back. All right, guys. So as we start looking at the team and for some stats, we've actually got a lot of options by way of what we can do with the team. Um, however, if I did want to play Anthony Martial at left wing instead of Sané, which is definitely a possibility because being right-footed, he would be a bit of a beast for me. Um, we sadly wouldn't be able to use Guilavogi, and that's because although Guilavogi would get full chem, Aubameyang wouldn't. And dropping De Bruyne down into the, center, the cam spot also wouldn't get him full chem either. So sadly, with no strong link to either De Bruyne or Aubameyang, one of them would have to suffer for chemistry, um, and that would suck. However, uh, obviously, when we get Henrik Mkhitaryan in tomorrow's episode, or maybe the day after, if I take rewards the first episode, um, then we got a, got something to think about. Because what we can do then is put Mkhitaryan on 7 chem at left mid and play Aubameyang on 10 chem. And isn't it weird that I'd be, I would happily play Mkhitaryan on 7 chem, but not Aubameyang nor De Bruyne? Um, other than that, guys, we've got Pogba in, in the squad. So to give you guys a breakdown of the stats... Uh, Courtois so far has 49 games, Juanfran 227, 3 goals, 19 assists, Varane 377, 8 goals, 4 assists, Ferdinand now with 106 with just the 1 goal, Mendy with 141, but he is now going to get swapped out for um, Alonso, and you can see other than Pace, Alonso is just better everywhere. 
better physicals, better defending, better dribbling, better passing, better shooting and a little less pace. We are going to have to get a shadow chem style on him. Um, but yeah, Mendy is a goner. Paul Pogba, 36 games, five goals, eight assists. Of course, he does play CDM for me, which is why I have the... Um, What's it called? The powerhouse on him. You can see there he gets a nice big defensive boost. You know, he goes up to 85 stand tackle and 78 slide tackle, which is decent for a CDM. He's got great ball control and dribbling. His passing is very good. Uh, maxed out, actually. 97 vision, 99 for short and long pass. His finishing is very good. Well, his shooting in general is very good. His finishing is actually very bad. And he's good. Um... Gareth Bale has been an absolute revelation for this team, and I just don't ever want to get rid of him. 111 goals in 146 games with 37 assists from Cam. That's spectacular for me personally. And on the left-hand side, we've had Sané, and this is where the, the difference comes in. Sané does get a fair few, like Sané gets assists about one in every three games just over uh, versus the... I don't know, one in every five games from uh, from Gareth Bale. So Sané definitely assists more, but Gareth Bale scores just under one goal a game and Sané gets just over one, one goal every three games. So, you know, he doesn't quite score as many. So it'd be interesting to see how Anthony Martial pairs up with that and can compare. Uh, Aubameyang, of course, has been a beast since we got him. 32 games, 47 goals, 10 assists. A uh, few sub-appearances there as well in the last few games that we played. And then Makaleli so far with 22 games and 7 assists. And then in terms of the bench, um, Mbappe doesn't really feature very much, if I'm being honest. Only 30 games. Most of those are subs. I'd probably say 28 are subs, maybe even 29. I remember did start, I did start him on one game, but I don't think I started him much. Uh, four goals, nine assists. Lala has been a big impact sub for us. 39 games, one goal, one assist. Marco Royce has been starting for us a lot recently, but was an impact sub for a little while. 19, 9 and 1. Um, Farman hasn't even made it. Obviously, I've got some Bundesliga guys on the bench there. Jovic doesn't really play either. And Mario Goetz are there. 13 games, two goals, three assists. What's crazy is Goetz is playing in the role that De Bruyne plays for me. Um, so 13, 2 and 3. And he started every single game. These are all my Division 1 games. And it's terrible, 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 that, that record. Because when we look at De Bruyne, he has got 203 game, goals and 186 assists in 342 games. He, he just, he scores two out of every three games. He gets an assist two out of every three games. Like, he is a machine. And then you look at what Mario Gertz has done, and it's just not even close. Five goal contributions in 13 games is terrible. Thorgan Hazard's been okay. Six goals in 11 and one assist. Um... And Guilla Vogi, he's actually scored quite a lot of goals for me. Three goals, two assists in 11 from CDM. So that's the team, guys. That's the, the stats. In terms of um, how far we are on this weekly objective, it, what was really weird is earlier on today in the afternoon, well, yesterday as you're watching this, earlier on in the afternoon, the teams and players I were coming up against weren't very good. And now this evening playing, I'm coming up against just super teams. You'll see the change in teams and the change in style of player I'm coming up against. And it's, I've gone from being very comfortable in my wins to just struggling. I've scored with Bundesliga players in more, all, all 11 games I've scored with Bundesliga players. But you have to also get wins. And it's tough. We've still got two days, about, about three days. By the time you're watching this, it's Wednesday. You watching this Wednesday? You watching this Thursday? You watching this Thursday morning? So I should have it done by now. I only need three more wins, as I said. But three wins isn't always going to be super duper easy. But we're going to give it our best shot. And, uh, you know, although we're not really going to do much without Jonathan Tarkard, he's just going to sit in the club for the time being. I do want to get him. And then in terms of fuck rivals, we're going to push for rank one this week. We're going to take the untradeable rewards. We're going to see if they're going to be good for us. We're obviously going to get four rare mix players packs, two mega packs and two rare mega packs. So we'll see how it goes with our rewards this week. Hopefully we get some good stuff. But I've got a lot to, not too many points to get. We're already up at, you know, over 21,000. Once I get that Jonathan Tarr, I can put my main team in and really start going hard. And in terms of the points, I got up to as high as 2,300 points. Um, so just 100 away from Division 1, maybe even 2,315 or something like that. Um, and then I've gone, I've bounced up and down this evening because I'm obviously trying to get this uh, this card. If I do go into the relegation zone, I actually might just put myself down into Division 4 for next week and have a week of playing fuck rivals and get myself back up into Division 2. Um, because it'll be easier for me to get Jonathan Tarr, it'll be easier for me to get the points in Division 2, and uh, then we'll get Division 4 rewards next week. And obviously that's the two prime goals, the two... 50ks and the 235ks they're really good rewards in division four so i don't know why you know i'm, I'm sitting here trying my hardest in division two 
and it's not benefiting me in any way, shape, or form. But with that being said, guys, we're going to go and get into some gameplay from what we've just played in Fart Rivals. I will be right back. Okay, guys, as we go into some gameplay, um, I have, of course, got some comments from the comments section. Why would I not have? That's what we do here. Uh, the first one is from Lockie McPherson. It was the top comment by a considerable margin with almost 700 thumbs up. And it reads, if you like this, your next pack will have an icon. Why? Why would you like it? That's not how the world works. Do you really think almost 700 people just got an icon? No. I, like, I see this sort of stuff in people's comment sections all the time. Everyone like this gets and your crush will kiss you. Stop doing that. This, this is not how the world works. I mean, I'm sure one person. Well, actually, maybe not one. I, I would argue that a maximum of one person went and liked that and then actually packed an icon in their next pack. And that would have been wild. And they would have been like, holy crap, that worked. It doesn't work. Don't do it. <laughs> Let your... Know, let, let the top comment be for something useful. Sam says, there's a foot swap player available in squad battles this week for anyone who didn't know. Get silver three. And Sam is right, and silver three is easy, and you should do it, especially if you're going for the foot swap players. Philip Bozinovsky says, how many hours of FIFA do you play a day? It depends. For example, today, I've barely played FIFA at all. Maybe for like 30, 45 minutes just to do a couple SBCs, and that's it so far. However, I'm going to be playing this evening for getting Jonathan Tarr and, and getting up to rank one in division two to make sure I can get those rewards for um, the video tomorrow. And uh, I would say on average, anywhere from four to 10 hours a day for varying different reasons. Um, that's how long I would, I would probably play in my, uh, in my guesstimation. Alex Faithful says, Hey Nep, have you thought of investing in Ousmane Dembele as he is 850 coins for an 82 French Barcelona card that can only go up in price? I would have Dembele, I think, in the club already. Um, at the, the time of recording this, EA have just released a whole bunch of new SBCs and they have caused the prices of 83s and 84s to go up considerably and it has caused the price of a lot of 82 that give good links and 81s that give good links to go up considerably and in fact I've made myself about 40 to 50,000 coins just like that, easy for selling players. I talked about this the other day and I talk about this on stream all the time. I went through and I bought a whole bunch of players, 81s, 82s, 83s, just because they were at, there was no reason to buy them. You know, we, I remember vividly talking about this in a recent video. And this is why I buy them. Because you never know when something's going to come out that's going to cause a specific player to just go through the roof. Now, in terms of buying Dembele, I don't know what his price is right now. Because he's French and Barcelona, I actually assume he'll probably be up in like 3 to 4k right now. Um, let me have a look on Fup Bin if he's gone up yet. So he's current. I mean, yeah, he's currently like 1,400 to 2,000 coins. It's 16 minutes ago, he was 1,400. So I assume now he's up around 2,000 coins. And so you, if you would have invested in him at 850 three hours ago when you made this comment to, to when I'm reading this video. So you, you basically said at about 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday, you should invest in him. And then at 6 p.m., his price skyrocketed. So if you actually went and bought 100 of him and put him on your trade pile, you've just doubled your coins. Fantastic. You've made about 80,000 coins profit minimum. No dramas. Easy going. I'm not this year investing in one specific card lots unless it's consumables. Because consumables, you can buy one, 10, or 10,000, and you can store them all in the club. And it just doesn't impact your trade pile at all. However... If EA didn't release what they released today and you went and bought 80 or 90 Dembele's for 850 coins, you've now got 80 or 90 or 40 or 30 of your trade pass spaces cl claimed where those, th those trade pass spaces are just being used up and you can't make coins out of them. So the reason why I'm opting in now to buying one of each player instead of lots of one player is because let's say, let's take 10 spaces. If I have 10 spaces for Dembele, and Dembele eventually went up to 14, 1500 coins and I made 800 coins a card. I will make 8,000 coins from those 10 trade pass spaces between when I bought him and when I sold him. 8,000 coins. If I open bronze packs and used just 10 trade pass spaces in the same amount of time, today's a bit of a different example because Dembele, as the example, has risen massively because of the SBCs. But those 10 bronze, those 10 spaces that I would have used for bronze packs instead, 
I would have made more than 8,000 coins in that time. So you, like keeping um, keeping the trade pile spaces free and open is super important this year for the way that I trade, whether it be from consumables, from buying and selling players, or from bronze pack method. I need at all times uh, my trade pile spaces to not be locked up. And now, right now, at the time I'm making this video, I actually have all 100 trade pile spaces taken up, but I expect all 100 items to sell within three refreshes so maybe not on the first one maybe on the second one almost definitely by the third one and if an item hasn't sold by the third refresh that item will either get stored back into the club if it's a consumable or a player that's not a duplicate for a later date when i can make good profit off of them again or i'll discard them or lower their price and just get an, a nominal amount of profit or a nominal amount of coins back for that player that way you've just got a constant revolving trade pass uh, set of ins and outs and profit constantly. And that's why I think a lot of people are seeing my coin total right now just fluctuate dramatically because sometimes I invest in a whole bunch of consumables or a whole bunch of players, buy some special cards, some informs, some UCL cards, my coins will go down. I start selling things off periodically, the coins fly up, you know, and, and it really is just like a roller coaster of my coin balance. I actually got down to about 300 coins um, at the time of recording this yesterday. And now at the time of recording this, I'm already at 100,000 coins or so with about 200,000 coins on the trade pile ready to sell and at least 400,000 coins in the club. So even though I've done so many players, you know, I've done uh, a lot of the SBCs and stuff, still in a case, still, in a, still at a point where I've got, after weekend league rewards come, I'll have almost a million coins liquid again. And that is amazing. Um, next comment is from... Tryhard says, is it worth it to use a sub straight away? For example, putting a worst player in a team for chemistry and then putting your preferred player on as soon as the game starts. If you can get that sub, like sub player to five chemistry in the team and 100 team chemistry and not impact anybody else's chemistry, start him on five chem is the same. If, however, you can only get him on four chem by starting him in the team, start a place, placeholder player and then sub them on straight away. That is how that one works. Uh, CJ Band says, hey, Nip, just want to know what you think about the lack of monthly rewards this year. Well, we don't really have a lack of monthly rewards. They're just distributed weekly instead of monthly. So instead of picking up for Elite 1, 20 red informs for the month, you're now picking up three informs per week, right? That's what you're getting. You're getting three red informs per week. So you get eight less informs in total, but you get to pick which ones you want. And if you miss a week, you don't get punished to the point where you miss out on Elite 1. You still get the other three weeks of full informs. So I don't think, I think the way they're doing rewards right now is amazing. This though, guys, is going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.